so anyway on today's show today's gonna be a quick show by the way it's gonna be a quick show what I want to do I want to talk about how certain things don't add up in relationships that's the theme of today's show I want to talk about how certain things just some just simply don't add up you hear about certain things or you hear certain things from your significant other and it ain't making no sense you hear certain scenarios and it just don't add up and a lot of times when certain things don't add up usually it's bullshit and the reason why i wanted to do this show is based on a call that i got this weekend on Ustream. we did a live Ustream, and all those people who listen to Ustream, you are familiar with this phone call that came through and i had to share this call here on the mac lessons radio show because it's a People have been talking about this phone call for the last few days. Very interesting phone call I got from a young lady on Ustream who wanted some advice about her and her husband. Her and her husband have been going through some things. And when you listen to the call, the woman sounds, you know, she sounds like a nice lady, but certain things she's saying is not adding up. Some of the things are just not adding up. And I want people to form their own conclusions. What do you think about this young lady who's calling? Is is her situation making sense? Does it not make sense? Discuss this among you and your peers. But I'm going to play the phone call. It's about 15 minutes long. And the young lady, her name is Ashley. She wanted some advice about her husband. He wants a divorce. And then she goes into the situation. And I, I kind of sided with her husband to a certain degree but but again i'm going to let you guys listen to the phone call and make your own assessments about it then i give my commentary at the end so this is the phone call ladies and gentlemen hi hey what's going on this insatiable yes this is me i'm ashley hi how how you doing ashley where you from i'm from houston there you go and what do you look like um i'm cute (laughs) <laughs> are you, you tall? We're, just trying, we're just trying to get a visual so we can help out with the game now how tall are you i'm five four how much you weigh um about 130 <laughs> and how old are you 27 okay. i'll be 28 cool she has a nice voice ladies and gentlemen nice voice so, you, <laughs> so, you, so you've been married for two years yeah mm-hmm. and, and you say you're trying to get your husband to not divorce you right so what makes you think he's going to divorce you well, I mean, we've had the discussion over and over. He wants to. Um, you know, we had a really bad year, our first, or really our second year of marriage. And um, I just don't know how to get him to change his mind back to wanting to be with me because um, a couple of months before, I had a car accident in December, and now I'm in a wheelchair all, until for about another month. Okay. Well, before then, he wanted to be with me. He, you know, decided to forgive me for all the things or for whatever issues we had in our past. After I got out of the accident, I wanted to be with him. And he felt like, well, then, you know, why all of a sudden now, why did it take you getting into an accident to decide that you wanted to be with me? Oh, okay. So, see, now, this is some real deep stuff here. Now, let's yeah. go back. Let's go back. Let's go back. Because if he forgave you, what did, let's be honest now, what were some of the things you did first? What did you do to mess up in the relationship first? Um, basically, we were having um, uh, some issues and uh, some trust issues on his part. And then um, a very bad thing happened to me. What? And it. I, uh, what, did a dude violate was, you? Or what happened? Yeah, uh uh-huh, I was raped. Okay. And, um, you know, instead of running to him and telling him, I would leave the house overnight. You know, I have a a daughter, she was two at the time, and I just didn't want to be around her. I know that sounds crazy, but I didn't want to be, I just felt really dirty, you know what I mean? So I would leave, and it happened like four times. I would go to my friend's house and I would call him, and, you know, tell him, hey, I'm here. But, of course, you know, that's not appropriate. No, no, so, not appropriate. No. Part, no, it's yeah. not appropriate. You should have known better than that. Of course. Yeah, but, you know, I was, there's no excuse. I mean, I messed up. Right, right. So, you like know, he, he kicked. Now, 
when you were staying out overnight, were you messing with some other dudes too? No, absolutely not. I wasn't even in a place where I could do that. You know, with that just happening to me, I didn't even want to go anywhere near that. You know, so, I just but you didn't wanted tell your, to be. Wait, so wait, 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 let's let's get into this now. So you were raped, and you didn't tell your husband you were raped. I didn't at first. Okay, that's I, the, Ashley. We're gonna have to let's 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 get the <laughs> truth here now. We're gonna have to get you some truth now. Now, now, yeah, you, you what? Uh, are you white, black? What are you? I'm black. Oh, okay, they they saying she's white. No, now hold on. <laughs> no, hold hold on. Mm-hmm. How were you in a position to get raped? Did you know the guy who raped you? No, I was at a bar with some friends of mine. Okay, and. And he, like, I was behind the bar outside smoking a cigarette. And he literally, like, attacked me. It was, like, when you walk outside, it's like a dark alley. It's kind of dark back there. And he grabbed me right there and, you know. How come you didn't tell your husband that? I was, I didn't know how he was going to take it. And I didn't. I didn't want him to do exactly what he was going to do, which is he was going to go and he was going to find the guy and he wanted me to press charges. And I really just was freaked out. I just wanted to chill and, like, try to get over it because it really messed me up. It really messed me up. I'm really trying to to wrap my head around it, and something is just not clicking with the – you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Because Mm -hmm. it, it just doesn't sound right if somebody gets raped. And you just come home. What'd you do today? Nothing. You did it. I'm no, saying? that's not how it happened at all. No. But you don't say nothing. <laughs> no. If something like that happens, if if somebody did that to my lady, I know she would mm-hmm. come home and say, "Hey, I was at a bar and a motherfucker attacked me." She ain't gonna mm-hmm. come home like you know nothing is cool. Like, oh, I don't want to upset you. That's just not a natural. It thing. wasn't that I didn't want to upset him, I, and that's what that's what he was telling me. You know, it made it hard for him to believe that it really happened. Which is understandable, but it wasn't that I, I didn't want to upset him. It's that I didn't want there, I didn't want to deal with it anymore. I just wanted to pretend like it didn't happen. Okay. It was it was just too much, especially during the time we were already having problems. I was in school full time, working. I just didn't want to face it, you know. So I just started acting out, and I would go and spend the night. I wouldn't tell him where I was going. I would just leave. I didn't want to be at the house. I mean, there was so many people in and out of our house because we lived with his parents. Okay. And then my daughter's there, and then all the nieces and nephews and cousins are around. And I just felt like I was going to explode if I just didn't get some free time, just time just to okay, sit wait, down and just wait, 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 be wait, alone. Wait, 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 how old is your daughter again? She's three now. Okay, and, that, and your daughter's with him? She's not well, with him, is it? Because you keep saying my daughter... Usually you would say our daughter, so your daughter ain't with him, is it? Yeah, it is. It's his daughter. It's our daughter, yes. Okay, okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, and, but you would just bounce and stay out. In the, okay, what do you expect dude to think? You acted weird, you getting raped and not saying nothing, then you go out on a regular basis and not call? So what do you think the dude is going to do? Of course, I mean, I... I kind of knew, I knew it was going to, I knew that we were going to get, I knew that it was crazy, you know, but I just was going through it. I just couldn't, I don't know. Yeah, and and if I could take it back, of course I would, because he thinks, I mean, I'm sure he thinks that I cheated on him, which yeah. I didn't do, Cause I you know, like and, it, and with my actions make, make it look like I did, but I love, I mean, I love my husband. I would never do that. Right. You know, it's been, it's happened to me before. I've been cheated on in the worst way. So I would never do that. But, I mean, I can't ever erase that doubt from his mind because my actions were so suspect. So. Yeah, it really is. It really is. It just seems very disingenuous. It just seems like in, right. right now it just seemed like you were doing this extra stuff you were doing that you're not saying. I wouldn't believe your ass either because I don't really believe you 100% now to be <laughs> um, Well, it makes, it makes sense. Now, but I mean, so so you were in an accident, right? When, when were you in an accident? December. Okay. Um, nineteenth. Okay. And now he's like, you know, he just wants to to go ahead and bounce now. 
That's, well, he's taking care of me. That's the thing. Right. <laughs> I see him like three times a week. He takes care because we're not living together right now. But he takes care of me. He takes really good care of me. Okay. And you know he he's he's perfect. You know, out of everybody that was supposed to take care of me because I can't walk. So out of everybody who was supposed to be there for me, he stuck around. Right. But. You know, when it comes to being in a relationship, he's like, you know, I'm just not ready to be in a relationship right now. I don't know what the future's going to hold. And I'm like, well, is there another girl? He's like, no, I don't even. And he doesn't. He doesn't go anywhere. He's here at the house. Right. So, I don't know. I don't know. But, but, I, but you yeah. know, I understand where he, and I know this is a hard pill to swallow, but the thing is, being with somebody, even when you were able body at the time, which you're going to be good again. So, you know, you're going to be mm-hmm. back on your feet pretty soon, which is good. That's good. Mm-hmm. But being with a person, when you're able body, you own some bullshit. Right. And he knows your own bullshit. You got to worry about your baby's mom, your wife, really, because you guys are legally married, right? Right. Uh-huh. Right, so you got to worry about your wife bouncing, staying out all night. And just doing this on a regular basis, that's one thing. That's a headache right there. Mm-hmm. And then you got raped and you're not saying nothing. That's another thing. You're probably out here doing some other slick stuff. That's another thing. Mm-hmm. And now the situation with the car accident, that's another compromise that you have to make. And you're like, okay, I'm doing all this for this person who really don't even seem like they would be grateful for me to do this. So I can understand, mm-hmm. you have to understand that's what's going on in his mind, right? Right. Right. Because the, the same thing, if you had a dude, just like that movie, The Diary of a Mad Black Woman, that Tyler Perry movie, where the husband mm-hmm. was beating on her and cheating on her and all this old stuff, and then he got in an accident, and the chick took care of him, but she did it reluctantly, then ended up leaving him for a light-skinned nigga with fucked up braids. <laughs> you did what I'm saying? Yeah. So, uh-huh. So, I think this is kind of a learning experience for you. Don't try to force anything hopefully if this brother says you know what this situation is making us stronger I want to rock with her again you got to do the right thing this is Mm -hmm. an epiphany and I think if you just kind of fall back and just they say she's lying she probably is but Mm -hmm. if you just kind of fall back there's nothing you can do to force the situation because you know whatever's in that brother's mind is in his mind right just come across as honest as possible and not honest just because you can't get out in the streets right now because you know you physically can't get out and run the damn streets like you used to and that's what you sound like you used to do <laughs> you came up with a, a little bit yeah. yeah you just used to run the streets and you were married <clears throat> you can't do that mm-hmm. and, and this dude can't he, he can't really trust you like that and you wouldn't trust him especially if something this whole rape thing, I'm still this. That's throwing me off because there's. It seems like there's more to it with that. You understand what I'm saying? No, I mean that's that's literally what happened. I just we were going through so much at the time, and I just I just didn't want to hear it. I just didn't want to hear. It. I didn't want. Sense. And another thing is too, I was like, he's not gonna believe me if I tell him anyway. Because that's not the first time this has happened to me. The first time it happened, wait, he wait, didn't wait, know wait, me. Wait, 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 you got raped. But you wait, wait, you got raped twice. Yes. Mm-hmm. God damn. The wait, first was it Jay Slim? Do you know Jay Slim? Did he say some poems mm-hmm. when he did it? No. 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 What What happened? How did you get raped the first time? Let's Let's. Um, I was at. This was years ago, but I was at my apartment. I was taking the trash out and. Someone jumped from behind my trash, the trash thing, and it happened. Now, was it the same guy? No. Uh. Uh-uh. Uh. Okay. So, so not the same person. It's just two, two completely different. I mean, I was in Houston. Houston's huge. So it's two. And I was in uh, the second time that it happened. Um, I was in like Baytown, or uh, and so it's kind of like on the outskirts of Houston. The second and the first time it happened, it was in Westheimer. Okay. Which is, you know, centrifugal to the Houston metropolitan area. Okay. So, are you okay? That sound. That's, this really don't sound. Some ain't right. And I, I don't want to mm-hmm. minimize rape. You know what I'm mm-hmm. saying? 
don't want to minimize that because that's a very serious thing. But mm -hmm. you being raped repeatedly by different people, that's kind of weird. You know what I'm saying? Because it's very rare I mean, for it's rare for a woman to get raped once. That's a very rare mm -hmm. thing to happen. That's very rare. But for to happen twice, and then a uh, you know, chick just don't say nothing. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. It just something seems right. very weird about that. Well, I mean, I I understand, and and so you can understand how my husband would feel about that. Right. You know what I mean? Like, it's weird, and I can't explain it. <laughs> I wasn't doing anything to ask for that to happen. Hold on, wait, 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 wait. You know wait, what I mean? Wait, 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 wait. Come on, we're gonna get into this because we, hold on, because you kind of brushing that rape thing. You got rape taken out the trash, and then you got raped outside of a bar. Mm hmm. When you were getting raped, did you scream? You outside of a bar, motherfuckers didn't hear you. They didn't see a raping going on outside of a bar. It was outside of a bar in an alley, a dark alley. And he, my, his hands were over my face. So I was screaming, but, I mean, the music was loud. You know, I guess nobody heard me, but my friends all came out and got me, okay. you know, when it was, when, you know, he left. Right, and, and then you took out the trash. Am I going to rape you at the, in front of a garbage can? Behind it. Um, there were these, in my apartments where I lived, there were these, um, I don't really know how to explain it. It's like a vault, kind of, um, a cement vault where the trash um, thing was at. Okay. And uh, he took me behind that thing. Okay, did you file a police report on either one of these? Yeah, the first one, I did everything to try to find who it was. I, I even moved from my apartment because I was terrified. Okay. I was terrified. The guys told me, if you tell anyone, you know, we're going to... Wait, 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 how many, it was multiple, wait, wait, it was multiple guys? No, it was one guy that did it, but there was someone else there. So anyway, that's the situation with that young lady, and the call cut off. The call was a little bit longer, but it cut off, but that's the gist of everything as far as that call. Now, the thing is, like, as you heard in the call, some of that stuff just simply did not add up. And again, I, I don't try to minimize anybody getting raped i don't minimize anything negative happening to negative happening to somebody because it the possibility is there but something just don't add up with that this young lady was basically saying that she got raped outside of a club and she didn't tell her husband and she was going through some things mentally and she would leave home at night and not come back and she did this on a regular basis and then she said that she was raped on another occasion years ago taking out her trash so again a lot of the stuff that's going on with this young lady simply did not add up and again I'm not trying to minimize anything because there's a possibility there's some thirsty dudes out here so there's a possibility of cats running up on you with the rape game popping off in them but in this situation, I'm, I'm, I'm kind of not buying it. I'm kind of not buying it. Just something don't add up. And sometimes when something doesn't add up, it's usually bullshit. And fellas need to understand this part of the game. Sometimes, man, you deal with females who are bad luck chicks. And I did a show about that a while back. These hard luck females, these bad luck broads. And there are some bad luck chicks out there. Just raggedy shit happens to these women. But a lot of times you have females who are just full of shit. And in this situation with, with Ashley who called, either she is a bad luck chick. I mean, she's then got raped once back in the day, then got raped outside of a club. And she's having mental issues where she has to leave the house. And then she gets into a car accident. So either she's a bad luck chick or she's full of shit. Because a lot of times people create the kind of energy that comes their way. People create the situations that that happen to them. People create the scenarios or people have a hand in the scenarios that happen to them. So, fellas, you have to look at that possibility and look at people and understand that they are in control of their actions. Random shit just don't happen to people just like that. It, it can, but for the most part, people create that type of um, 
thing to happen to him. And the thing is with this young lady, I, I don't blame her husband for not buying it. I just, I don't buy it. What, what do you guys think? Listening to her her story, do you buy what she's saying? Am I being too sens- insensitive? Because me, I don't believe shit. When I hear anything, I'm I'm one of those type of people. I I just don't believe shit unless I can really. If it sounds remotely bullshit, I'm not really believing it. You got to convince me. I always look for the lie in something. But the thing is, this situation just doesn't sound right. Even the raping outside of a club, none of that sounds right. You in a bar, you go into an alley. Why are you going into a dark alley? You understand? There's so many whys there. Why are you going into an alley? Why didn't you make noise? Why didn't you say something to your husband? Why didn't you file a police report? There's too many whys in that situation. That's why I kind of call bullshit on that. And uh, again, not to seem insensitive, what it sounds like as far as this young lady being at the club, getting raped, or the bar, what it sounds like, she probably got drunk, started flirting with dudes, got to flirting with a cat, they ended up taking it to the next level, the nigga probably hit it outside or hit it in the bathroom, because women do that, women get drunk and niggas be banging in them in the bathroom and little freaky shit pop off, and what, what happened... She sounded like she took it to the next level, sobered up and realized she took it to the next level and said, oh, damn, I don't want to feel guilty. So this was a rape. That's what it kind of sounds like. It doesn't sound like a genuine rape. The the scenario just sounds crazy. And the fact that she has a very nonchalant attitude about these quote unquote rapings further lets me know that something ain't right there. Something ain't clicking. And fellas, if something don't add up, it just don't add up. A lot of times, man, fellas, you get into these relationships with these females and they have all these crazy background stories. And they expect you to believe all this crazy nonsense and then they get mad at you and guilt trip you for not believing it. That happens to a lot of guys. They run a guilt trip on you for not believing all these crazy scenarios but you shouldn't feel guilty for not believing something that don't sound right if it don't add up it don't add up and when it does not add up you can step back and say wait a minute I'm gonna call bullshit until this thing gets some clarity in it but until then I'm just gonna assume you full of shit and I'm gonna have to roll you out of here and charge you to the game Don't be afraid to do that. Don't be afraid to charge somebody to the game or put them on timeout until you get some clarity with their stories, until their shit starts adding up. Because the thing is, man, some people, I'm mean, naturally humans, we want to believe other people. Naturally, we give people the benefit of the doubt as far as telling the truth. But the reality is, people lie. Motherfuckers be lying their asses off. That's the reality in the game. Some of their lies are more convincing than others, but people will just lie with a straight face at the drop of a hat and hold on to that lie. And then they'll start believing their own lie. But if it does not add up, if it sounds like bullshit, nine times out of ten, it is bullshit. And you charge these hard luck or bullshit women to the game. Don't feel guilty for doing that. So, anyway, on today's show, today's going to be a quick show, by the way. It's going to be a quick show. What I want to do, I want to talk about how certain things don't add up in relationships. That's the theme of today's show. I want to talk about how certain things just some, just simply don't add up. You hear about certain things or you hear certain things from your significant other and It ain't making no sense. You hear certain scenarios and it just don't add up. And a lot of times when certain things don't add up, usually it's bullshit. And the reason why I wanted to do this show is based on a call that I got this weekend on Ustream. We did a live Ustream and all those people who listen to Ustream, you are familiar with this phone call that came through. He, you know, decided to forgive me for all the things or for whatever issues we had in our past. 
after I got out of the accident, I wanted to be with him. And he felt like, well, then, you know, why all of a sudden now? Why did it take you getting into an accident to decide that you wanted to be with me? Oh, okay. So, see, now this is some real deep stuff here. Now, let's yeah. go back. Let's go back. Let's go back. Because if he forgave you, what did, let's be honest now, what were some of the things you did first? What did you do to mess up in the relationship first? Um, basically, we were having um, uh, some issues and uh, some trust issues on his part. And then um, a very bad thing happened to me. What? I'm about 130. <laughs> and how old are you? 27. Okay. I'll be 28. Cool. She has a nice voice, ladies and gentlemen. Nice voice. So, <laughs> so, so you've been married for two years. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and, and you say you're trying to get your husband to not divorce you? Right. So what makes you think he's going to divorce you? Well, I mean, we've had the discussion over and over. He wants to. Um, you know, we had a really bad year, our first, or really our second year of marriage. And um, I just don't know how to get him to change his mind back to wanting to be with me because um, a couple of months before, I had a car accident in December, and now I'm in a wheelchair all, oh. until for about another month. Okay. Well, before then, he wanted to be with me. 15 minutes long. And the young lady, her name is Ashley. She wanted some advice about her husband. He wants a divorce, and then she goes into the situation. And I, I kind of sided with her husband to a certain degree. But but again, I'm going to let you guys listen to the phone call and make your own assessments about it. Then I give my commentary at the end. So this is the phone call, ladies and gentlemen. Hi. Hey, what's going on? This is Insatiable. Yes, this is me. I'm Ashley. Hi. How you, how you doing, Ashley? Where are you from? I'm from Houston. There you go. And what do you look like? Um, I'm cute. <laughs> are you, you're tall. We're, just trying, we're just trying to get a visual so we can help out with the game. Now, how tall are you? I'm 5'4". How much you weigh? Uh, and I had to share this call here on the Mac Lessons radio show because it's a... People have been, have been talking about this phone call for the last few days. Very interesting phone call I got from a young lady on Ustream who wanted some advice about her and her husband. Her and her husband have been going through some things. And when you listen to the call, the woman sounds, you know, she sounds like a nice lady, but certain things she's saying is not adding up. Some of the things are just not adding up. And I want people to form their own conclusions. What do you think about this young lady who's calling? Is is her situation making sense? Does it not make sense? Discuss this among you and your peers. But I'm going to play the phone call. It's about 15.